What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. So, in this video, we're going to be reacting to So You Want to Become an Orthopedic Surgeon. This is by Medical School Insiders, and it goes a little bit into about what it takes to become an orthopedic surgeon, what the lifestyle looks like, compensation, um, what the residency and training compared to other specialties. And I'm gonna react to it and see how accurate Medical School Insiders is in depicting orthopedic surgery. Are they correct? Are, are, are certain things wrong? Um, and we're gonna jump right into it. Thank you to the sponsors of this video over at Stoggles. Stoggles are your everyday goggles. They behave like glasses, but they're actually protective goggles. Uh, these are very sleek, they're very stylish. They come in various uh, different colors and different uh, shapes of the uh, lenses here. You can also get your prescription uh, put in them um, if needed. But, um, you know, they were kind enough to send me two pairs of their uh, stoggles here. These protect from UV light, from their anti-fog, uh, from blue light, from any type of contamination, especially with everything going on with the COVID pandemic. You have to protect your eyes from, uh, if you're in healthcare, any type of uh, nursing, PA, surgery, uh, you got to get you a pair of these. Look at these. You can wear these to the club. You can wear these to the hospital, to the anatomy lab, and look stylish while, while doing it as well. So definitely check them out. There's a link in the description for 10% off of your order. But thank you Stoggles for sending me uh, two pairs of their uh, glasses here. So you want to be an orthopedic surgeon. You like the idea of fixing broken bones and growing out. Let's debunk the public perception myths of what it means to be an orthopedic surgeon and give it to you straight. This is the reality of orthopedic surgery. Ortho, coming from Greek orthos, meaning straight or to correct, and pedia, meaning rearing of children, was originally concerned with treating children with skeletal deformities like bow legs or knock knees. In essence, orthopedic surgery focuses on the musculoskeletal system. This translates to fractures, meaning broken bones, but also surgeries involving tendons, ligaments, and sometimes nerve or vascular injuries. The sports injuries you see on TV of your favorite athletes, like ACL tears, Achilles ruptures, or rotator cuff issues, are handled by orthopedic surgeons. But there is much more to it than that. There is a variety of ways to categorize orthopedic surgery. You can look at interventions that deal with fractures of bones versus soft tissue ligamentous and tendinous repair. You can look at non-acute versus acute surgery, such as trauma, outpatient versus inpatient, arthroscopic minimally invasive versus open surgeries, adult versus pediatrics, or regionally, you can look at orthopedic surgery as spine versus pelvis versus extremities. To become an ortho... That's the reason why I like orthopedic surgery. There's a wide variety of different... Uh, different patient populations as well as injuries, a uh, wide variety of different surgeries that we can perform, whether you go into sports medicine, pediatrics, trauma, spine, joint replacement, oncology. Uh, the list kind of goes on in terms of the variety that orthopedic surgery kind of offers. Orthopedic surgeon, you'll have to complete a five-year orthopedic surgery residency after medical school. A single research year is generally optional and can be pursued by those interested in becoming surgeon scientists. In terms of competitiveness, orthopedic surgery is consistently in the top five in most recent years being ranked fourth only behind dermatology, plastic surgery, and neurosurgery. I agree. Orthopedic surgery, very competitive. Dermatology, plastics, like they said, neurosurgery, ENT, always at the top of the list. Um, you know, when I was applying to residency, um, I was told this and I applied to like 80 to 90 programs because I knew how competitive it was. Surgery and neurosurgery. To be considered at an orthopedic surgery program, your step one score and one rep max on bench press must exceed 500, otherwise your application will be tossed out. <laughs> Uh, that's actually pretty true. You got to bench press about 450 uh, and squat about 375. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's a big misconception. People think you have to be 
really this jock or this former athlete that goes into orthopedic surgery, but that's not true. I mean, it is a physically demanding field and you have to be able to do a lot of physically demanding things in the operating room and also in the outside of the operating room in the ER. So, uh, but that's not true. You don't have to be a certain size, a certain height, certain gender, uh, to go into orthopedics. Orthopedic surgery candidates are top students with very high step one and step two scores. The field is highly dominated by men at approximately 95%. However, that is changing for the better, and I've personally worked with several talented female orthopedic surgeons during my training. Like all surgical residencies, orthopedic surgery residency will be incredibly taxing. There will be a significant amount of time on inpatient services compared to outpatient, which translates to earlier and longer hours. After completing residency, you can choose to subspecialize further with a fellowship, most of which last one year. While there are some general orthopods, over 80% decide to subspecialize, and some even complete two separate fellowships. That I, I definitely agree with. Um, most people do a fellowship. It makes you more marketable, it makes you uh, kind of stand out kind of in, when you're searching for different positions and certain jobs. Um, and some people will complete two fellowships. A former resident that was one year ahead of me, she did a foot and ankle fellowship plus a sports medicine fellowship. So some people do joint replacement or and oncology or spine surgery and, and oncology. So it just depends on what your interests are. Most people complete um, one fellowship. In trauma, you'll be dealing with fractures of the long bones of the extremities, such as the femur, tibia, forearm, and humerus, as well as fractures of the pelvis and hip socket. Oftentimes, these fractures will be open, meaning the bone came through the skin and was exposed to the outside world. You'll often be managing intra-articular fractures at joints such as the elbow, shoulder, knee, and hip. Intra-articular refers to fractures extending into the actual articulating surface of the joint. Many of your patients will have multiple, if not all, extremities injured in some way, necessitating planning and coordination of multiple surgeries. You'll be working side by side with general surgery trauma surgeons, as these patients often have accompanying intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic injuries. This is the subspecialty for you if you don't mind irregular and unpredictable hours while on call. You will often see patients on the worst day of their lives, but help them recover from debilitating injuries in order to get back to a normal life. The surgeries that you do each day will be diverse and unpredictable, but are oftentimes very rewarding. Yeah, the lifestyle for a trauma surgeon can be very busy, but lately there have been kind of changes in this where um, the lifestyle is a little bit better in terms of having a more set kind of schedule, whether you're on for three to five days at a time, and then someone else takes on that next three to five days, so you could just do clinic and focus on kind of catching up your on, on surgeries or elective surgeries. So a lot of the hospitals are going more to a, a kind of schedule that allows for a better lifestyle, especially for trauma surgeons. The pay is not as high compared to other orthopedic subspecialties because many traumatologists treat uninsured patients and are employed by hospitals instead of being private practice. Of all the subspecialties, pediatric orthopedic surgery is the most broad as you'll be operating on a variety of conditions in patients less than 18 years of age. Most commonly, this includes trauma, since kids love breaking things, but it also includes sports injuries like ACL tears, spine surgeries to correct scoliosis deformity, and deformity correction of congenital limb defects. You'll see everything from healthy kids who broke their wrist to kids with multiple congenital syndromes who need multiple procedures throughout their lives. So speaking about the pay of orthopedic trauma surgeons compared to, let's say, pediatric orthopedic surgeons, pediatric orthopedic surgeons are probably one of the lowest paid uh, subset specialties of orthopedics just because a lot of the injuries, a lot of the surgeries, a lot of the conditions, per se, are treated non-operatively. So in order to generate income, you have to cut, you have to operate and do surgeries. Well, orthopedic pediatric surgeons, unless you're in a very high volume center where you're doing a lot of scoliosis uh, cases, um, most orthopedic pediatric surgeons uh, are on the lower end of kind of when you're kind of ranking all of the orthopedic surgeons together. 
A great deal of pediatric orthopedic surgery is non-operative. This is the subspecialty for orthopods that enjoy a broad scope of practice and have the patience to work with both children and their parents. Spine includes surgical intervention to correct spinal deformity, trauma, degenerative disease, and nerve compression. Spine surgeons are consistently among the highest compensated orthopedic surgeons. You'll be dealing with multiple areas of the axial skeleton, operating primarily on the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine, and occasionally the sacrum. There is some overlap between orthopedic spine surgeons and neurosurgeons. That I do agree with. Spine surgeons at the top of the list all the time right up there with neurosurgeons, just because the surgeries are very high risk, they're very complex surgeries. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, compared to any other specialty that's out there, especially within orthopedic spine surgeries, consistently one of the highest paid subspecialties. As both operate on the spine with similar indications and techniques. However, neurosurgeons will also operate on lesions that affect the actual spinal cord that extend into the dura, which is the outermost layer of the meninges. As an orthopedic surgeon, you'll stick to just the bony spine and leave the spinal cord to the neurosurgeons. Now that I disagree with. Although most interdural pathology, like a tumor uh, that goes into the dura, uh, this is essentially what neurosurgeons historically have taken care of and, and feel comfortable kind of managing. Well, there are a lot of orthopedic surgeons who will do interdural work as well, uh, but for the most part, if it's in the dura, or if there's some lesion or some big tumor that is um, inside the spinal cord, that usually goes to the neurosurgeons, but um, some orthopedic surgeons were trained to do it as well. Anything around the spinal cord, if there's compression, um, any tumor that's pressing on top of the spinal cord, uh, orthopedic surgeons, we take care of this also. Tumor is a tiny specialty with only a couple hundred trained across the country. Cardiothoracic surgeons deal with intrathoracic tumors. General surgeons specializing in oncology deal with primarily intra-abdominal tumors. But as an orthopedic surgeon specializing in tumor, you'll be dealing with both soft tissue and bony tumors in the extremities, spine, and pelvis. If you are an orthopedic tumor surgeon, you'll likely work in a major city at a major hospital in coordination with many other cancer doctors, such as medical oncologists, radiology oncologists, surgical oncologists, pathologists, and more. Sports is by far the most common fellowship for orthopedic surgeons, but they treat far more than just athletes. Sports medicine fellowship, very common. A lot of people like to go into it because of the lifestyle and also being able to work with certain uh, teams, whether that's professional or collegiate, um, high school teams, uh, very common. It's pretty saturated also, the amount of people that go into sports medicine. While they treat sports-related injuries like tendon and ligament tears, they are also generalists. They deal with ligamentous injury, tendinous injuries, shoulder and elbow disease, and foot and ankle overuse. Oftentimes, their focus is on the knee and shoulder joints, whether it is replacing these joints, called arthroplasty, or treating pathology surgically with the use of a small camera, called arthroscopy. The more serious trauma is reserved for trauma orthopods, but sports orthopods also handle a good amount of orthopedic trauma work. When your favorite athlete tears their meniscus, ACL, or rotator cuff, these are the surgeons to find. These procedures all pay well, but you won't be as highly compensated as a spine surgeon. And as a sports orthopedic surgeon, you can work anywhere from the smallest town to the largest city. Joints primarily comes down to hip and knee replacements, which we call arthroplasty. Joint surgeons also perform procedures to help delay hip or knee replacements in younger patients, but the majority of their practice is becoming the best at hip and knee replacements. As a joint surgeon, you'll also do revision surgeries, meaning when something goes wrong with a hip or knee replacement, like infection, fracture, or loosening, you'll be the person to go in and remove the implants that need to come out. This is one of the most competitive fellowships. The field is highly desirable due to arthroplasty being a predictable lifestyle and hip replacements being one of the most successful surgeries that exist. I agree. Hip replacement, one of the surgeries kind of a compared to any other surgery that's out there, it gives the most satisfaction for patients. And um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the most gratifying surgeries that you can do, because someone comes in with very severe arthritis of their hip, you're able to do a surgery and procedure, they can walk out the next day, two days later, go home, and don't have that pain anymore. They can live life again. So very satisfying procedure. 
Patients come in having pain with every step and walk out the hospital the next day. It's an extremely rewarding field. If you like repetition and becoming really good at a few different procedures, this is the subspecialty for you. There's a lot to love about ortho. First, you'll actually be fixing pathologies rather than just managing them as you do in many other medical specialties. Patients come in with a distinct problem and you have a way of fixing it. Also, orthopedics usually has good outcomes, with most patients having substantial improvement to their condition after surgery. Second, the surgeries are fun. Scopes and minimally invasive surgeries are becoming more widespread in all surgical specialties, and while they are great for patients, they aren't as fun to perform. I disagree with that. I think a lot of the minimally invasive procedures, like a, a arthroscopy or any type of MIS procedure, man, these procedures are a lot of fun. So, um, you know, you're able to do these procedures and get patients out of pain. I can't think of any other better thing to do than that, so. Orthopedic surgery still has plenty of open cases with amazing exposure and anatomy to appreciate. Third, it's a team sport. The personalities within orthopedics vary widely from the days of everyone being massive bros. However, the common theme remains that most orthopedic surgeons are team players. There is a sense of camaraderie amongst orthopods, and they generally will work hard for each other. At the end of the day, orthopods know how to work hard, but also have a good time. Fourth, you'll be well compensated. Orthopedic surgeons are consistently the number one or number two highest compensated physicians duking it out with neurosurgeons. Lastly, you get a focus on a particular system. You won't have to do much medical management, which is what you spent so much time and effort learning in medical school. Some medical students are disappointed by this, and others consider this a unique benefit. Whether it's a feature or a bug is for you to decide. As with many surgical specialties, orthopedic surgery can have challenging hours. That being said, be thankful those long hours are in the emergency department and operating room doing actual procedures, and not so much in clinic. Diversity in the field has historically been lacking, both in gender and in background. The field is 95% dominated by men, one of the most skewed of any surgical specialty. The good news is that it's slowly changing for the better, with women making up at least 14% of residents in 2016 to 2017, and that number is growing every year. Diversity, huge problem. The number of African Americans in orthopedics and also the number of women in orthopedics is certainly lacking. Something that we definitely need to change. For better or worse, it will be difficult to escape the bro stereotype. All personalities are welcomed and present, but some do dominate. And lastly, oftentimes it's not very precise or meticulous. When I was weighing neurosurgery versus orthopedics versus plastic surgery, it was readily apparent that most orthopedic surgery is not as concerned with finesse, precision, and nuance. However, hand and tumor subspecialties within ortho are big exceptions. Depending on your personality, this can be a good or bad thing. How can you decide if orthopedic surgery is the right field for you? The stereotype is if you say dude frequently, can bench at least two plates, and are prone to fist bumping over handshakes, you may be an orthopedic surgeon at heart. With that said, anybody can be an orthopedic surgeon. If you love musculoskeletal anatomy, meaning bones, nerves, and muscles, then it may be for you. If lots of effort, hammers, drills, scopes, and big incisions aren't enticing for you, then consider looking elsewhere. And finally, orthopedic surgery is a highly competitive specialty, so you'll need to be willing to work your tail off in medical school. That translates to more than just high board scores, but also playing the research game, being a leader, and crushing your clinical rotations beyond just surgery. Overall, this was a good uh, kind of overview of the field of orthopedics. Uh, I thought they did a good job of explaining what it is, what it one needs to do in order to get into orthopedics and also succeed, and some of the various specialties. So, you know, I applied them. Good job in summarizing kind of orthopedic surgery kind of as a whole. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the sponsors of this video over at Stoggles. Make sure you check them out. There's a link in the description for 10% off of your order. You got to get you a pair of these stylus glasses. You guys will see me at the club wearing these, see me at the hospital uh, wearing these stoggles. Uh, they're stylish. Get you a pair. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.